Good morning, folks. Plasma filaments have been appearing on the northeastern limb. Yesterday, one of them started feeling a bit crowded and decided to leave the party a bit early. The filament was several times larger than Earth, and most of it leapt out of the corona, but none is coming in Earth's direction. The rest of the plasma filaments coming in there remained connected, but there's a good deal of instability, and there are more on the southern hemisphere coming in as well, as you'll see in shots of our star to close. Top space weather story. That solar wind intensification we saw yesterday was indeed a coronal hole stream. The speed nearly topped 800 kilometers per second overnight, so even without a strong density spike, the magnetic disruption was significant, Earth's magnetic shield got overloaded, destabilized, and Earth spent most of the night in a geomagnetic storm. Running it down, we took another gamma ray burst a few hours after yesterday's news posted. Came out of the Sculptor constellation. Back at our star, flare activity has plummeted since the heliocentric planetary geometry ended, and we're right back to where we were before the planets lined up. The sunspots are on the decline as well. Flare makers departing in the big group on the disk has lost what magnetic complexity it had, and we now see spread magnetics and very little chance for flares today. Most interesting quake of the day was in northern Africa, where they don't see many. That swarm is continuing in Alaska, but luckily no bigger ones just yet. Largest quakes of the day were in the West Pacific, but they weren't that large. We should get some bigger quakes the next few days, as our next coronal hole will soon face Earth on the northern hemisphere all while a full moon arrives within 48 hours of the Jupiter opposition. Could be a fun week. On the heels of our Robitaille share yesterday, let me also share one written by him and Stephen Crothers. If you want to know how twisted around science is right now, how flawed our assumptions have been, and how little science understands about the universe, I suggest giving it a read. Let's jump to the ESO, latest animation and article as we zoom into what they describe as the mouth of the beast. It is always fun to read admissions of just how little we understand that which we can actually lay our eyes on. Somehow, these systems in the Indian Ocean are still alive and still heading east, but they shouldn't get to Australia. One on the other side might be a different story. It has begun weakening already but will still produce some inclement weather in the region. This is just a taste of the snowstorm the Midwest just got hit with. A couple of days ago on January 29th, we put out a video on another snowstorm coming to the already pounded areas of New England. Welcome. She's a day late and may not show up until tonight, but she's still coming. The system's still feeding off the Gulf of Mexico moisture as well. Meanwhile, the U.S.-Canada border is still the host of a Pacific moisture flow that will put some white on the ground out west as well. We can still see the lows in northern Europe, now broadly affecting the entire continent, pulling north in the east, pulling south in the west. I heart patterns. Lows and convergence lines bringing precipitable water to the coastlines of Australia and to most of New Zealand. It's where our weather will be as their cyclone approaches over the next few days. We've got the current conditions followed by shots of our star to close. It's 5.50 a.m. Eastern Time, 2.50 a.m. in California. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.